Hello traders, this is Rich Terry from TradeSite. This is the uh, market pre preview for Wednesday, March 20th, 2013. This past session we had a, a bit of distribution uh, after a little attempt to go higher after in recouping gap down. We uh, wound up settling about five handles lower on the New York side and about uh, seven and a half handles lower on the uh, NASDAQ side. The Dow was green on the day, but uh, still, all in all, it was, it was still a, uh, a definite distribution day. You can see that by the uh, advanced declines here. Advanced declines were negative uh, by a few hundred on both sides. The VIX was higher on the day, up about a buck, and the put call ratio also moved up a little bit more. So definitely more of a risk-off day, and people were definitely dropping their bids uh, with a little little bit more strength in the uh, in the dollar index on the day. Right now, the dollar index was up about uh, a third of a percent, give or take. So let's move on to the uh, to the uh, charts and uh, take a look at what's going on. Right, here's a look at the ES futures. We still have this uh, secret exhaustion in place. Had not really made good on it yet. And turn lower, but we did uh, we did undercut yesterday's low, which which officially makes this seeker sell signal um, active right now, rather than just being being a warning. So we are definitely thinking that uh, we're going to take a trip a little bit lower here, and if and when we do that, we will uh, start targeting some levels. So nearby levels of support, uh, obviously, are going to be the uh, this previous high here from February that was our breakout point. We actually touched that today. Call that the five ace level at 1531 here. That's also the uh, the Murray Math level, and overhead obviously still here the uh, at range high on the move, uh, anywhere above uh, 1550 the market's had trouble. So overhead anywhere over 1550, key support 1531.25. On the Nasdaq side, today Nasdaq was uh, had a pretty big range. Actually traded outside all of today's all of uh, the previous session's range, but we did close lower on the day. We did come down to, to get in the area of the uh, 50 DMA, but initially used that for support. Keep in mind, when you drop down to the uh, major moving averages, the 50 and the 200, the first time you uh, you start to interact with them, you usually do find some support. And sometimes that support can, can kind of morph into more of a gaining back and forth before it either pivots higher and regains that level or before it breaks down. So typically when these, when these big levels get hit, there is a bit of gaming going on. You can see back here a little bit earlier uh, in the year, back in uh, late February, we did get down to the 50, which was really not saying much because we were still basically within the, the range of the year here, this tight range here. But you did see this gaming process back and forth before we ultimately pivoted higher. So just always, always want to be aware of that when you come into contact with one of the major moving averages because that gaming is very, very typical. So key levels for the NQs um, for tomorrow are going to be uh, obviously, today's high, then beyond today's high, we're going to be looking at 28.1250, which is the 8 ace level on the Murray Math Box, into the downside, yesterday's low for sure. And just keep in mind, yesterday's, lo yesterday's low is approximately the 50 DMA. All right, here's a look at the, the, um, the multi sector chart in the daily time frame. And again, uh, most of the growth sectors did have, uh, did have distribution. There was some uh, defensive buying in some different areas. Uh, the uh, XAU had a little bit of a lift, but uh, certainly not not a big day up. Uh, the strength in the dollar uh, recently is probably holding back that to some extent, at least right now, uh, because the strength in the dollar kind of keeps a, keeps a lid on gold, since uh, they they tend to trade uh, contra. So gold was up a little bit, but uh, the uh, gold stocks are still just kind of hovering here. We could definitely see some better some better price action in a positive way from the uh, from these. Uh, from these gold names, if the uh, if the market does continue to weaken, as uh, people go to that as a safe haven. Okay, and here's our 10-day trend. The trend today uh, closed at 1.23, so that bumped up our 10-day uh, moving average a little bit more, right up to about that one area. We're still just really kind of at the fringe of the of the middle of the neutral area, so we've got quite a ways to go before we get to uh, an oversold reading up here that would be uh, 1.35 or higher. So for now, just read this as the market still has overbought energy in it to potentially be released uh, in the form of downward price action in overall equities. Okay, here's a look at our cumulative advanced decline lines. Um, again, we, we were negative on both sides today in the cumulative uh, advanced declines because we were negative overall intraday on the day. We are starting to turn down here a little bit, but we, 
we don't yet have a a real break in trend. It's not really one of those leading rollovers, but we do have ne negative price action. We have to see, uh, stay on top of this to see if this starts to uh, accelerate to the downside. All right, here's a look at the uh, S&P TLT cross. We uh, did lose some more ground on this today, getting back down towards the middle of this uh, trend channel. We're actually in, technically in the lower half now, but we've got quite a ways to go before we get down to the lower boundary of this channel. Where, where we have found support, where the, the market has gone risk off enough to uh, start to bounce. So we're, we're not there yet. So there's uh, still room in this uh, for more potential downside in equities overall. All right, the NDX versus the, uh, the S&P is fairly flat today. Um, it's definitely not extending to the downside here with, with more weakness developing the NDX. Right now we're just kind of hovering sideways here, so really nothing to be learned new here. Okay, we had negative action today in both the uh, oil services index and also the uh, also the oil futures themselves. I'm just going to put a trend line on here because we're uh, at risk here of breaking this 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 low right now. That I'm highlighting. We're kind of down in this area of this low. If we do break this to the downside, that's going to going to be uh, a C wave kicking into effect. Here's your here's your top right now. This is the A wave down. This is the B wave bounce that retests the high. Came up short. A lot of times they come all the way up. This one it came up short. Now, right now we're coming back down to the uh, to to the low to the, to the swing low of this first A wave down. If we break this to the downside, we're actually going to be in a C wave. That's definitely something that you want to be on top of as far as looking for short opportunities in the uh, in the oil sector. A lot of these have had a lot of weakness recently. And if this continues, there's going to be some real nice short setups breaking down into uh, into clean levels that haven't been traded in a while. So keep an eye keep an eye out for the uh, for the OSX here holding this previous low. It's going to be really important. If this does break down, you can already see that uh, that crude futures are starting are starting to leak, and the crude futures are below the point where we were on on their A wave down. All right, real, real quickly, the uh, the SOX was weaker than the NDX overall. We lost a little more ground than our SOX NDX cross. So we now have kind of this expanding pattern setting up. If you take a look at where the cursor is now, expanding to the upside here, and now we're, we're starting to expand to the downside here. These expanding patterns that range higher are usually reversal patterns. Obviously, we're already below this key level here from the weekly chart that we looked at yesterday. And this is definitely negative overall for the NQs. Okay, now here's the uh, here are the individual sectors. Um, you can see that there was basically strength in more, the more defensive names. We had strength in the in the pharmaceuticals. They're at the top of the list here with positive performance, the utilities, and the con consumer durables. Those are all kind of defensive plays. The uh, higher beta stuff was definitely weak on the day. Energy stocks were weak. The uh, oil and gas index was lower. The OSX was the uh, was the last performer, and then a lot of the other names are just kind of stuck in the middle here. Uh, for the OSX, just keep in mind here that while this is trying to break down, we are uh, definitely starting to, starting to get a little bit uh, further along in some of these counts. So if we, like we talked about, if we do pop up and, and make one more high, we're actually going to have a uh, a 13 exhaustion. We're 12 days up here in the Comer exhaustion, and as far as the uh, oh, that was the Seeker exhaustion over here in the Comer, uh, we're 11 days up. So there's a lot of a lot of things that are close to exhaustion if we do start to bounce and turn back up here. We're 11 days up in the BTK index and we're 10 days up right now in the uh, in the defense index. So there's a lot of things here that that even if we do bounce and turn back up here are going to be running to some key resistance. So let's take a look at some of the uh, the major individual chart. Okay, here's a look at the XAU. The XAU was uh, kind of in the middle of the performance today. It was essentially flat on the day. Pretty much an inside day. It did try a little bit higher at one point today, but uh, ultimately wound up kind of pancaking down at the end of the day. So we're still essentially trapped in this same range here, just kind of uh, pivoting back and forth across this uh, this 10 EMA. So really, uh, no real signs of life yet, but there's certainly a ton of potential there if they do decide they want to come back and uh, and start picking these up. Under the BKX, the BKX today dropped down, used the 10 EMA for support, essentially inside of the previous day. So when we break out of today's range or yesterday's range, Tuesday's range that is, then we could could get a little bit of a better move. Keep in mind this eight days level at 56.25 is going to be very important to the market if we do start to head down, and then also this uh, 
this level right here, which is about 55 and three quarters, which was the swing high from February, which led to this breakout up here. So this is also going to be the next level to watch on the downside if we get there. Obviously, range high here on the chart is going to be the uh, upside target 57.50. And the Sox was kind of a kind of in the middle of the group, down about uh, four tenths of a percent. Definitely moving lower on the day. You can see that this 13 exhaustion has now qualified itself. We closed below the 10 EMA, and now we have uh, traded one tick below that closing candle below the 10 EMA. So we're now officially in a short-term negative trend for the Sox. Uh, I've got support right here. That's kind of double barrel. We've got the rising 50 and also the uh, static trend line here from this nine bar count. So we've got key support right here in the Sox at 419, uh, about 85. So if that gets lost, that's going to open open the door to the uh, this swing low right here at 413.30. BTK traded inside. So when this pattern resolves itself, we're going to be looking for either retrade of the high here at plus one ace, 18.12.50, or to the downside here, the next level is going to be the 17.50 at eight ace. That that gets lost, then we're going to go back down to the previous high here uh, from February about uh, 16.95, and then don't forget that the that the 50 DMA is also right in that area, so that's going to be a double barrel uh, level as well there. And the OSX was the last laggard on the day. Um, we talked about the the OSX previously here. This is uh, really the key here. This prior swing low, the OAH has the exact same setup. Uh, that's the tradable ETF, so keep an eye on that as well. Uh, if we do break to the downside here, we've got that 6 ace level, which is very, very minor uh, for the GAN box. But the bigger level is going to be the static trend line from this 9 bar run right here that comes into play. That's going to be right about 229 and a quarter. Then if that, if that yields and gives way, then we're looking at the 200 DMA down here, 223.47. Let's take this one candle at a time here and uh, first take a look at uh, this prior low right here, which is going to be the, f the first key to take a look at. All right, here's a look at oil. Oil was, qu oil was quite a bit weaker on the day. You can see that uh, we had a pretty pretty good range the previous day. The tail goes all the way down to here. Uh, we didn't quite, quite trade outside, but we did close at range low. Yesterday, they, they were able to kind of recoup this and save it, but today they were not. This is going to be, let me see, one, two. This is going to. This is going to kill that count. So this is not going to be nine days up. This is going to erase this uh, this nine bars that was in the works here because this is not going to qualify closing uh, higher than the close four bars ago. So this this count's going to be erased. The uh, next level to watch is going to be two ways, which is also the 200 DMA. The 200s on our charts are the green line. So definitely this uh, 60. And uh, five ace level is going to be very, very important uh, if we uh, make a further push to the downside here. And the goal was up on the day, but um, not decisively by any any stretch of the imagination. One thing to keep in mind is that uh, we're now going to be um, maybe nine days up here. Let's put on the projection mode. Close the candle, so we're nine days up off of uh, off of this run. So we're going to find a little resistance here just off of the count. The other, the other levels to watch are going to be this swing high and then the 4th level at 1625. Right, folks, that's going to be it for this evening. Uh, as always, thanks for listening. This has been Rich Derek for TradeSite.